three is good. Mm-hmm. It gives you, lets you try something out, and then you can see if you want to get a subscription or the rest of it. Yeah. Rather than investing in something and then finding out what I wasted my money. personally want to see what Google Glasses can do. Yeah. I want to know what I'm watching out for when I see people in the street looking at me and what can they find out about me? Because you know people are going to be able to hack them. Before you know it they're going to be looking at your credit cards and you know? Well the guy who jailbroke uh the iPhone already jailbroke the Google Glasses. Really? Well they they opened up the SDK. I mean they yeah. already already put the code to it. There, so. Hey Chris, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Next Good. month we're having a free raffle for um, a free subscription to the cloud for a year. Yeah. Oh. So every month that you come, yeah, we do it twice oh. a year. We're giving you a raffle ticket, so if you're a regular, you've got more chances to win. But you have to be here to win. Right? Yes, you do. If you're not here, then it's the only reason he's here. It's the only reason he's here. I'm just collecting yeah. tickets. Did you, did you like it? I, how could you not? Uh, it's, it's how could you not? It's great, isn't it? I know. I fell in love. I was like a kid. When I got yeah, that, when my subscription came through, I was like, oh! I've been looking at all. I've been taking, doing tutorials and all kinds of stuff. That yeah. I if I didn't have a subscription. Yeah. It's it's well worth the, the, the money for it. Yeah. It really is. Can't say enough good things about it. Give it another minute and then we're just going to start. People come in, then you come in. Sense of dream we were on. Yeah. I had to come because I love dream we Yeah. And I wanted to hear what he had to say. Logan loves dream we too. I do. I do. I do too. I like it a lot. I don't know about love. Yeah. I like yeah. it a lot. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, men's you idea of love and women's <laughs> idea of love are totally different anyway, so, you know. For you to say you like it a lot, I would say you probably love it, you know what I mean? I have not. I just do the dream a lot, and it's a text editor if I have to, or, you know, like that, but just to have it, to work on it every day. Mm-hmm. Okay. I had it when it was all for them. Yeah. Then they jacked up the price and everything, and I, I couldn't afford to keep up the. Yeah. But um, hey, I'm looking forward to getting you know. reintroduced. Mm-hmm. You nearly ready? I'm, I'm like 30 seconds. Okay. All right. Shut this up. Or maybe not. Shut the door. Hi, folks. Um, I'm Michelle Johnson. I run the Adobe User Group along with Daniel Flores. Um, we have some social media if you would like to follow. We have um, a Google Plus and a Facebook page, which is Adobe User Group of Atlanta, and we have a Twitter, A U G A T L. And I try to, when Adobe sends me out updates about things, put them on the Facebook and the Twitter and things so that it can keep you up to date. There's some tutorials or some new, there's a whole lot of new software coming out with the cloud that they're announcing just now at Adobe Max, which is their annual conference. So there's a bunch of exciting things coming along for the cloud. If you have that software, you'll be able to download it for free whole load of new updates coming out because they're doing away with the creative suites now and just having the CC, which is the creative cloud. So it, it's exciting. Um, I gave everybody who came in, except you did not get one, a raffle ticket um, because next month we'll be having a raffle for a year subscription of the creative cloud. And I do this twice a year. The next one will be in November. And what it is is when you come to each meeting, I'm going to give you a raffle ticket, and then 
it, more meetups you come to, the more tickets you get, then you've got a better chance of winning. Because if you're a regular, I feel that you've got you should be in the running to win the software rather than you know somebody that maybe just turned up once, got the software and ran. <laughs> so yeah, you know, I mean, I understand that that's the way raffles work, but you should have a little bit more of an edge, I think, if you're a regular attender. Um, well, tonight. Logan is going to talk about oh. Dreamweaver. Is it, you already said to record? Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was going to say, I forgot to take that shot of Irish whiskey before I start talking. But what oh, I, he doesn't but, have to be that's nervous. Okay. No, that's okay. Um, hi, I'm Logan. Everybody, I, I know quite a number of people here, actually. Um, and basically, what, why I, I did this um, was... What is the what is the Wi-Fi password again? I know you've only said it like mm -hmm. ten times. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. Um, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now everybody on the internet knows it. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, so we were at a, uh, a meetup, which I'm surprised, and, and you know what? Maybe we need to talk with them about, the, about, about it, but we were at... Uh, Rust company, remember them? No, the place is that. It's, oh, it's the pretty cool. Media, the, the yes, they're yeah. they're a game development the game company. company. Oh, okay. uh, they're in Virginia, well, actually, Inman Park. Yes. And they Average have an awesome space. Mm -hmm. uh, but but we were there and, and talking, and uh, you know, once I have a couple beers in me, I just won't shut up. And <laughs> and um. Something happened up here about Dreamweaver, and I said, well, you know what, I could, I could give a Dreamweaver with my eyes closed talk that would, like, throw some people's minds uh, differently, because developers and, I mean, designers maybe not, but developers always give, you know, boo-hoo Dreamweaver a lot, mm -hmm. and um, I'm like, okay, look, it's not my central IDE, it's not the, my, the main IDE, I think uh, uh, maybe the best, one out, best ones out there are probably, as far as an IDE goes, it's probably a PHP Storm or Web Storm as far if you're just doing straight code. Um, but that's not what that's not what's happening. Uh, developers, especially independent ones like me or, or other freelancers or whatever, are are having to play both sides of the field. They're having they're having to be uh, the back end and and the front end, the GUI type stuff. You know, they're always having to deal with some sort of graphics. Like uh, expecting a designer to say, um, "Okay, I want this button when they click on it to turn red, and then it goes over to this page." Like, oh well, they, great, they can do that with CSS, but then they perhaps want it. Oh, can, we want the button to change shape on the other on the secondary page when it's in, under any of these categories. Well, then you're probably dealing with databases and stuff like that, and you're going to have to deal with a back-end guy, and he's going to have to deal with the graphics. And I, I completely understand if, uh, you know, people don't like, or, or the, or the back-end guys don't like dealing with graphics or how pretty things are, or stuff like that. It's like look, they just care about the data. But the fact of the matter is, you're going to have to, you're going to have to deal with, with graphics at some point. And if you're not great at graphics, like me, the the easier uh, the easier it is, the better. Um, yeah, I think we're. Is there any way we can just turn off the? Yeah, but I was, I was trying to keep the light on your face so that when I don't record. Oh, they, 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 they don't need to see my face. Oh yeah, Fine. <laughs> yeah um, much better. <laughs> 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 Love you, Kevin. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, but anyways, there's. I guess back when this happened, I was right in the middle of, uh, I got like a new client, and this is particular to freelancers, and their site had not really been updated, or it had been updated, it was, I think they had outsourced to some Indian person, um, and uh, I took a look at it, they actually had like, they're, they're doctors, they actually have like three or four different sites, and Dreamweaver in a lot of ways saved my butt in a lot of time. And I was saying, you know, 
when you take when you're taking old flat sites and you want to give them new functionality and you want to one of the first things you're going to do is for example changing all the tags from uh, .htm to PHP so you can start doing file includes and conditional includes and locking down pages better and, and stuff like that uh, that's important well you're going to do a search and replace and, and, and do that? Or what if something would allow you, just by changing the file name, do that for you? And Dreamweaver does that. It uses a thing called site cache that the instant you change the file name in the site manager, it will change all the other pages that are connected to it. I don't know of anything else that does that. Um, You're talking about the names and the source files? No, so I'm going to show you this. Okay. But but there's there's that there was like oh my god there's and I'm going to show you this as well. There's CSS. There's a mix of font tags and CSS uh, includes in the files of themselves, as well as external links. And Dreamer makes it very very easy to, uh, without even actually going into the guts, move those CSS styles that are internal to the external. Uh, there's a, a bunch of neat little things. Round trip editing, you know, I've been going to meetups for up and on for, I don't know, how long have PHP been around? Like eight or nine, ten years. And I've never seen anybody show round trip, round trip editing with graphics. I'm going to show you a little bit of that. Uh, that is, without a doubt, one of the, I, I really like to see some other product have something like that. But anyways, um, let's get to it. Let's, uh, am I actually good? No, what I've done here is that's, that's, an ex that's like a secondary screen to me. And that's why you're not seeing okay. what I'm seeing. So uh, don't worry about that. That's some pretty drink you were. I know mine doesn't look like that. I was kind of that. It's actually totally fake, you know. It's digital blasphemy. It doesn't exist. Okay, so let's see. You're going to notice a lot of my slides are, are just kind of, kind of uh, blank and whatever because I really wanted this to be more of a uh, discussion and. I had no idea what it was going to look like on this. Uh, yeah, sure. Really? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, question that, that most people, uh, especially, sadly, uh, most people never really ask, uh, especially recruiters, are you a web designer? Or a web developer. Let's let's separate that. There's a big difference. Designers are definitely more into the aesthetic of things. A lot of people are, are supposed to be both, but we're not always. And uh, we like to pretend that we're always good at that. But I have to farm out design stuff because I know some of my stuff is just ugly. Um, that's in in a way that's kind of where Dreamweaver is kind of nice nice for editing some of the stuff. Uh, I'd like to know, just to raise the hands, who's freelance and let's say who's freelance, who's independent. There you go. That's that's <laughs> exceptional. I don't I think in in the PHP group, I mean that's that same question last week and it was uh, like two or three people were freelancers. But uh, by the way guys, Kevin is uh, co leader of the, the Atlanta PHP group here, so that's what I was looking at it. Um, so, how many here have actually used Dreamweaver before? Awesome. That means I don't have to. I do not have to do the simple stuff, and I can get more into the meat of the, the cool stuff. So, I'm not. Um, oh yeah, this kind of set to remind me. By the way, spray assets, drop them. Don't even don't even bother using them. Uh, they were great. They were cool at first, but when they don't work on an iPad tablet. Are you kidding me? Like their menus mess up. Really? 
I, I can't, you know, the iPad was out when, when the Sprite was in, introduced in, into Dreamweaver. Then nobody thought to test that. That's, that's just kind of sad. And thankfully nowadays you have, you have uh, jQuery and uh, Bootstrap, especially for, for menus and stuff. Use that. It's, it's wonderful. It's part of the Flash department. Huh, yeah, no kidding. You like something I know like fireworks. But, but well, you, you know Adobe has, I mean, I, I guess, you, I don't know, if Adobe's dropping Flash. I don't know if you, they've already said that, so it's not even a thing anymore. But and fireworks? By the way, there's someone here, uh, this is my last slide, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a spaz, I'm going to jump around. Somebody, somebody on the conversations, uh, I just want to say this before I run out of time, but on the conversations for this meetup had, had uh, mentioned something about H HTML5 video, putting video on there. They were curious about that with Dreamweaver. I didn't ask. Okay. Well, I want to point out right now, it's uh, uh, Dreamweaver as it is right now does not help you. It should, but it doesn't. And it's not totally Adobe Dreamweaver's fault. Um, the HTML5 video tag is very, very uh, first off, HTML5 is not standardized yet, so uh, and not all browsers can display all types of video. Um, some browsers will only support MPEG-4, others will only support MOV. If you pretty much, if you include, and Sprinter's got to that point now, if you include, and it's really, it's a lot simpler than it used to be, if you basically include, actually move let me just jump to that. I told you I'm jumping ahead. Um, that's what you have to do. Um, it's it's pretty pretty nice. Let me just video, and you're saying source MP, MP4. It's not going to display. It looks like oh, it's going to display some <coughs> videos. Right? No, it's only going dis to display what your browser can, can show. That's great. Compared to what you used to have to do with if you had a FLB right. And, and actually it's part of what, what older version of Dreamweaver uh, was great at. You could actually drag a SWF file um, or an MOV file, whatever, straight into your into the screen and it would create the controls for you. You, In fact, you could even it'd be a, a click whether to show controls or not. It was wonderful. But when you looked at the, uh, oh my, you know what I'm saying. When you look at the code around just, just to display, oh my God, it was like five times that the amount of code. No one would ever want to hand, hand code that stuff. And what's kind of amazing is that that was Adobe. It's an Adobe product, but that was, that was certainly not simple. Hey, Barbara. Um, so anyway. Let's, let's go let's go back. Um, Does it do that just in order? Like, if, if your browser support two? Yes, yes. It's gonna. Um, I, I, as far as I understand, it's, it's a preference thing. It's gonna like, okay, can it, it? I'm guessing the video tag does a test. Do you support this? Yes. Do you support, or no? Okay, what's next? So it's it's a. Uh, and MPEG four makes the most sense. But is that is that presentation on? Oh, the link to it, is that on the Sorry? Yeah, do you have access to this? Yeah, but you know, there, there's really not that much here. You're gonna, I'm, I want to show you this stuff. This is just really kind of keep me in order, which I've already violated by jumping ahead. So, <laughs> yeah. But it, it, I just wonder, I just basically typed all the subjects first, moved them around to kind of be sort of grouped together, and so I could skip over some of them as well. Are you guys aware, um, so like, here, uh, site management, show them. It was kind of a question to me. I don't think I need to show you how to use a site manager, right? But I am going to tell you this. First time I ever, on a Dreamweaver install, I do not get it. So, site manager, let's do it. Um, first things I do, um, let me close this. So, that really mucked it up, didn't it? Um, oh, here. Load 
going to be for the, the Adobe Site Manager versus uh, like FileZilla for FTP? No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so let's go to actually oh. the uh, is it? Yeah, Taylor Metal Pro. So here's Site Manager here, right? This is what you guys are used to seeing, right? And then, but this is the very first thing I always do that I, I. Maybe it's just me, but maybe it's the fact that I'm an English speaker, and that people sp read from or English read English from left to right. It makes a lot more sense to me that local stuff would be on the left, remote stuff would be on the right. Plus the alliteration of it makes a lot more sense. It's simple. The, the default of Dreamweaver is opposite. So. Uh, I don't know, maybe on Macs, whatever, Control J. Actually, not Control J, is it? Probably someone's. God, this really, this resolution is killing me. Um, control U. And of course, it comes over to the screen. Um, one of the first things I do is change that. Just boom, site, look on the left. And that's it. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be there if, you know, a lot of people didn't actually. That. that that was necessary. Um, so, uh, I have a question. Sure. And uh, excuse me, this might be sort of elementary, but the only thing that I've really used Dreamweaver for is just the coding for HTML and CSS. So let me just finish. I know you asked everybody if you're familiar with Dreamweaver and no, CSS, okay. okay. but like coming from school, we were never taught all the ins and outs of Dreamweaver. So my question is. This site manager is this essentially like an FTP where you put yes. your website in there, Completely. and all the files for that website are right there. Yes. Oh, okay. That's what I kind of thought. But I just want to make sure. Now, um, there's uh, as in if, as I used to I used to think, uh, and this is not really not too long ago, maybe three three years ago, three or four years ago, I used to think you probably hear things like Git or SVN or CVS like version control. I used to think, well, I'm always, it's always, always just me. So why should I bother with that crap? I don't have to, that's all too complicated and stuff. And I, I <coughs> Git has only been out for five years, maybe six. Um, but I would highly and push everybody, even, you know, designer types. If you're going to be, you are going to be working with people as sites get more complicated, you need to understand the very basics of Git. You don't have to understand a branch. You don't have to understand all these different little partic particular uh, crazy things with it. But, and, and there's a reason I'm, I'm talking about this, knowing Git will save your ass. It is a total cover your ass sort of thing. Because with this, with it as it is, which is, I mean, it's nice because we have, we, you can mess up your local file all all day long, and, and here I am uh, connected to, oh, oh that's right, because I'm, I'm using WAMP. So it's actually the same thing. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I was like, that's way too fast. But yeah, this, this is generally your FTP server, uh -huh. or in a, in a maybe a more, slightly more complicated environment, there might be a testing server. But you can do, most people do a lot of testing on the local, on the local bit. And then when it's good, they upload it. Okay. But what happens? What happens if you ever have a, a client, and this is where Git can save your butt. You have a client that makes changes on the server without letting you know. That's going to happen. I mean, and then you make changes to the file without downloading their copy first, and you just overwrote their changes, and then all chaos goes nuts. Well, with Git and a little bit of discipline, you don't have to worry about that. You can, in fact, you could make multiple different changes, uh, even changing graphics and stuff like that, and roll back. You could roll back to last Thursday if you're good about, and, and you have a, a better setup than a shared server, but you're, you're good about committing your own changes. And when I say committing, I just mean, mean basically check in constantly. 
like every time you, you make a few changes or you're about to leave your desk, you do a git, uh, a git commit, and you just like leave a little message what that is. I'm going to show you, by the way, the git of, of this site. Oh, good. So you're going to see like, oh, interesting. What's also really nice about it is like, who's great about tracking their hours? Yeah. <laughs> Please raise a hand. Really? Yeah. One, I'm, I'm amazed. I, I, I would love to work with you because I'm horrible about tracking my hours. Do I like doing it? No. Right. But I'm really, really horrible about it. But by getting to the discipline of it and realizing something like Git, that you have to, and people think, oh, it's command line, and actually there's, you can get around the command line. I want to show you that too. But I don't want to go too, too far off that. But it timestamps every little change. And as long as you make little changes all the time, you can go back and like, oh crap, when did, I forgot to build all that time, like last Wednesday or whatever, and it's like, oh, oh I see. This is when I started making changes. And you can see that forever. And the client doesn't have to ever see these. They don't have to see your mistakes that you made or anything like that. But there's other things that, it, anyways, I, I'm probably going too far on it, but it's, it's a great thing that, <coughs> it's it's rough at first. It's really rough, but um, Git is sadly slowly going to be the de facto standard that designers, web designers, are going to you're going to have to to get to, to know to understand. So where does Git do? Git's free. G, it's G I T by the way. But oh, and there's there's one final thing before I I'm, I'm sorry I'm on a big tangent here. What about this? You're getting older, and you can't remember what you did 30 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. Nobody in the See, that doesn't happen, right? No. No. Never. What if, what if you just made a few changes, or you're like, God, this thing was working. Ugh. It was working five minutes ago. What the, what happened? Well, it allows you with oh my god, with two clicks to see the differences between the last time that you checked in and what you just did. It shows every single file change and you can just double click and it'll, it'll show right next to each other the differences. And you can see exactly, I mean, talk about debugging stuff, oh my god. And then like, oh, you know what? Um, this is what I actually wanted in this file that I'm working on. Okay. And you can right-click on that line, copy over there, and then you're fixed again. It's it's a wonderful thing, but I'm really going off topic of whatever. But I I did want to kind of show you something here though. Uh, Dreamweaver supposedly doesn't have Git, but what's that? There is a free extension for Git. Um, you just type in Git Dreamweaver. And uh, it does not work quite as nice as the command line, sort of, or as I prefer, the explorer <coughs> line. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to open here. Uh, let's see. This, uh, this is really confusing. Here we go. Is that it? Oh, yeah. Of course, it comes over here. So this. Taylor Medical Group is actually, uh, right, here we go. Um, see all these check marks, these green, green things? That's Git. It's part of Git. It's Git and, Git and Tortoise Git. Um, that shows you what files have changed. If I uh, make a random change, uh, and I'm going to do it here just to... That's right. Blah. So I'm just going to make a blah 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 change. I don't care. Have you look at that? It's now there. And this is not part of Dreamweaver. Sorry for the, the big distraction here, but you're going to see what I mean in a second. So tortoise get is an add-on to Git for graphical-minded, uh, graphically-minded people. 
Git is all about commits, which is basically, okay, I'm stopping here, and I'm, I'm, this is what I've done. Uh, this right here is, where is it? The, yeah, here we go. Oh. See this like little track right there? That's a working directory. That's what's changed. See it says that modified file. And here's the difference. Just kind of a hint of guys what it's it's it'll change your world and <coughs> save your butt as well as allow you to track time better. It's a it's a win and working so with other people. It's, it's tied into Dreamweaver. You just you access it right yeah. from your file. You have to you have to install Git and you install Tortoise Git, then you install this Git thing for Dreamweaver and it, and it works. Put the Dreamweaver exchange and right. Look for Git. No, um, it's only for CS6 or just for no for CS55. Five five. I'm running CS55. Five five, oh. By the way, so. Um, but anyways, let's uh, let me get back on track here. But I'm just trying to say that like you guys, uh, it is is a major lifesaver. Uh, it does have support. I don't know if you guys know this or not. Um, there is within Dreamweaver, if you're working on, gee, I'm sure none of your independents or work, ever worked on WordPress. Um, it does support WordPress uh, code hinting. And so it's a it's not a great it's not a great implementation in my opinion, but it certainly helps. It makes it try to be more aware of what WordPress is trying to do, and it's and it's we're, it's mostly dealing with it's like got a, it's got a cache of WordPress's uh, functions, common functions. But in my opinion, they're not keeping it up to date. Adobe is not keeping it up to date enough because things are changing all the time. So, hmm. just, but it is, it is pretty decent. Is that on the exchange as well? That's actually built into oh, uh, CS55. Okay. And by the way, let me show you how you change, how you get to that. Um, so it's, where is it? Oh wait, let's go back to this page. Site-specific code hints. Oh my gosh, this is a problem. Just jump over here. So here we go. Oh. Yeah, you could give a class to Dave. Yeah. There's a lot of information. <laughs> oh well, this is that's not, this is nothing yet. Yeah, that's go, go, that's go. unbelievable already. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's see. Uh, So let's go straight into uh, Dreamweaver a bit, and this is a. Uh, I go to this site is pretty horrendous. It still sort of is, and it's kind of like this. Kind of has to be. Um, it would be lovely. I've never, ever had a client say just do whatever you want and uh, um, and just to uh, keep billing and uh, we'll pay. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a client like that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, want, I want that client. These clients are more like, do the best you can, we're making these changes, but don't do much more than this. I actually have to eat some hours just to make it more manageable, um, including, well, it wasn't too, too bad, what I'm about to show you that I did. So, and Dreamweaver helped me with this greatly. Uh, let's look at, oh, sure, that's funny. Okay. Oh, this is 
really going to be horrible in this resolution. But we'll go ahead and get it. On the iWebsite. Okay. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, Would it help if we pulled that back? No, I'm, I'm going to. So, you know, uh, I'm assuming you guys know about this quick little tab thing up here to mm -hmm. minimize that, yeah, right? So, we'll do that. Um, but I kind of need that. Not letting me go any slower. It's not <coughs> what I kind of need, but I'll totally just get out of, just do it straight from design. And you can kind of see it. So here we are with this pretty sad little menu. That's okay. If you look at the click here, of course, it's showing the links, right? Now, what was that? New page 23. What? New page 23, that's not really descriptive at all. That's insane. So I can go to new page 23 and it's. Awesome. Because by me renaming that file, it's now updating every single other page that links to that same file. I've now made that file descriptive, and that's how much time or how much do I want to build a client for that? You know? An hour. Yeah, well, I'm not. But I mean. <laughs> But because, because I'm totally that, kidding. But no, no, no. <laughs> that, that's 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 the asshole clients you do. But but uh, that's 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 the the asshole tax. You know the yeah you've been a jerk. Yeah, watch this. But but, but no, really, because really it's, it's partly for me. It's partly for me. But wow, that's great. You know that's that's wonderful, and I can I can actually kind of get uh, nicer nicer names and I know what, what stuff belongs. I mean, is this page linked to anything or whatever? Have you guys ever used the, uh, by the way, the, um, the site map view in Site Manager? It's kind of neat. I don't really think it's very pragmatic, but it's kind of neat. Uh, So long. I guess it's really not that important anyway. I hardly ever use it, but it kind of gives you a visual view of all this stuff. But let's just, uh, yeah, that's just really not that important. But do you know about this? This breast cancer, you know what, this is actually uh, pointing to, it looks like nutrition and health. What is that? Why is, why is it doing that? Um, Let's see if there is a, yeah. I'll bet you it's pointing, it's meaning it points it's PDF. Well, I could just like, you know, click this drop down and try and do that or, or type that in there or whatever. Or, and I really don't understand why any other ID doesn't do this because I think this is just wonderful. I can just click this thing right here and point. That's what I want. Oh, there we go. That's wonderful. I don't know. I, I don't know if people use that a lot or not. I use it all the time. I love it. But it's 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 great. Um, the uh, I mean, 
how many times you're gonna Okay, look, this stuff, okay, that's pointing at this. You want to fix a link real quickly? It's wonderful, just pointing to it. You get to know the files. By the way, with that with that file name change, I probably should have said this during the file name change. Honestly, and I've, what I did here is I went back in my Git history to where I first got the site. That's why you're looking at it like this. It's all, all these files have been renamed PHP and all that, but I want to kind of go through and do this again. So some of these changes that you guys can see what happened. Because <coughs> all these pages, I wanted them to auto-calculate uh, auto calculate the copyright field at the bottom. I wanted to separate the, the, uh, the, the footer into a footer page, the header into a standard header. Um, I could have done this with templates. Are you guys familiar with templates? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. We'll have to go into that, but um, but uh, but it, it makes it very very easy uh, with with uh, Dreamweaver to just uh, have all the includes, and you can get to those files really quickly. By the way, you guys notice something? I just opened this one page, and what is all this? It opens every single file that it's connected to. That's wonderful. That's that's so much time saving right there. That's just uh, that's such a time saver. But uh, let's go back to design. So here we are. This page I know, for example, I'm just picking it randomly. Awkward number creation. Um, this page is almost kind of duplicate. I'm going to start here, renaming, or actually turning this page into a PHP page. There we go. Just go through every HTM, HTM page, add P you know, change the HTM to PHP and you suddenly have a site that is way more dynamic than what it was before. And it works. And it works. It the has all the... The only, the only problems that where this might encounter any issues is if you're using a database, and the pages might be stored in the database itself uh, in, a, in a, a static way. You'd have to actually go into the database. and Sometimes some links will be generated by the database, fields to we'll say, okay, here, create this link to go to here. But for a static, a static site like this, it's great. And it fits all the HTML and fits the PHP in there? Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's, well, I mean, all, PHP is, is just HTML. I mean, it's just well, HTML, yeah, but, but without, the but the PHP tags. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm going against, and, and part of the reason I, I brought this up is that so let's just, you know, this is the first version. I would be surprised if, let's just pull something up. Yeah, here we go. So that's something. This, that tag, let's just top tag. Let's go here. It's really, it's, I really can't show that it's really difficult with a small resolution here. Uh, but let's do a split. Things I use all the time. Uh, oh. So I want to. Can, is there anything I can do about the resolution? Because this is. Hmm. I just don't know if we can handle it. Uh, I'll go into sites all the time. Like mm -hmm. one of the first things I'll do is uh, clean up HTML. This will go through, remove uh, extra tags, empty tags. Uh, so say you have a font tag or something that's you know kind of ancient that is open and closed. You can see somebody clean did it something before and never cleaned it up. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in between it. There's a P tag, P closed. 
kind of gets rid of it. Where was um, I at again? Commands. Oh, commands. Oh, and it looks like it's. Oh, here we go. This is what happened. Okay. By the way, you can kind of a nice little extra thing. So font tags are no more, right? Because it's all CSS now. You can put in a font right there and it'll remove all the font tags. Your page may look like crap, but you can at least get rid of those old tags. That's a good thing. You can having it allowing it to uh see it's even kind of funny how it's ancient, but it's even like combined nested font tags. So there's a font tag they're saying the same thing, same thing, same thing again. It like it's smart. It'll get rid of that stuff. And I'm not even really sure what it I'm I mean by Dreamweaver's special markup, because for years people were saying Dreamweaver put special markups stuff in there. I've hardly ever seen anything like that. The only time I've ever seen a uh, markup that was kind of Dreamweaver-ish like would be if somebody used a uh, a rollover behavior or something. Say rollover behavior. Yeah, but, but that was JavaScript. It was JavaScript. It's something you dumped a bunch of stuff and then there was reference to image files. Yeah, but, but it, was, it was still JavaScript. I mean, the thing is, it, it ran all browsers, and it didn't have to be Dreamweaver specific. You could rename those variables, and the, the only thing that you would really lose there is that Dreamweaver couldn't remove it easily. And and of course, the you know the shockwave files tags, but those, those, that stuff was actually useful. So anyway, that's that's pretty decent. Uh, There's an equivalent on a Mac, I am sure. But if you're sure working, sorry. Okay. So, what do you think Control Shift U does? I use that almost every time. I'm, every time I work on a page in Reverb. Updates. Uploads. Or puts. So you modify your file. You're happy with it? Sure, you can go into the site manager and you know click this file and click put, or you can just say Control Shift U. Puts it on the server. Puts it on the live server right there. I use that all the time, especially when I'm going to make it like a little quick quick change. You know, Control S always saves. Control Shift U. So Shift Enter. Hi. Shift Enter puts a VR in. You know, when you're typing normally, if you if you hit enter, it's going to be a paragraph tag. Shift enter the br, so it's a single line. Con control M, and I'm sure they're they're probably very similar. Command M or something like that on the Mac, or, but but you can look up it. Control M. You're working in a table, a row, you know, and you need another row. Like right where you are, you need to insert a row. Control M inserts another type of row. Does it do it for columns? Um, you. I'm rarely adding columns as much as I'm adding rows. Uh, so I'm sure there probably is a shortcut key for that. You can assign a ton of shortcut keys. Uh, but Control M, I, I find myself using more when you're you're adding more stuff to. It. But uh, but you can always right click on any table, and insert column. It'll, it'll do that. Tables are kind of gone. Kind of, some tables have kind of gone out of, out of fashion, uh, because it depends on what you're trying to do. So sometimes, for for grid data, for like database data, tables are going to be around for a long, long time. That's really kind of what they're for. For um, other sites that, uh, like maybe like menus. That where you have like a, a bunch of
columns where some people might have put uh, those into tables, that's now kind of frowned upon because those columns should be put into spans with bootstrap so that if somebody's looking at on a, uh, on a on a tablet device or on a phone, instead of it being the columns, that they'll all shift under each other. That's and I can I can show you a site I'm working on that does that if you yeah, want. Sure. And it's all bootstrap bootstrap magic. It's all Twitter bootstrap magic. I love bootstrap. Oh, it's it's wonderful. Oh God, where's it been? I know. It just makes things so easy. Okay. You know this is funny. This is gonna um, uh, this is gonna look really odd here because of the resolution. Let okay. me ask you a question. Uh, you said um, so the bootstrap the Twitter thing. Mm -hmm. So you you uh, you edit that those that site your your account with the Dreamweaver. Uh, actually, it? actually, I, um, um, I I could. Oh. This is a, a .NET site. Okay, we just um, mentioned that you weren't saying that you edit Dream with Dreamweaver. I could. I mean, it's fine. Um, it's it's a uh, um, because it's done now. I usually stay within Visual Studio, but you know what's what's amazing to me is that Visual Studio, it's Microsoft's little IDE thing. What's amazing to me is that they haven't like and uh, in, the, in the way they kind of have, but still not quite as nice. Uh, they haven't gotten how nice it is to be able to edit code either on the design side or on, or on the code side, and immediately <coughs> see it not, not below the code, not above it, but side by side. That is, is great because you're generally going up and down the page and you click on something, you want to see where that is. It's a much better, to me, it's a much better uh, model for, vision, you know, for dealing with it. Because the browser, honestly, the browser looks at any page, top to bottom, in that order. It's not jumping around the page and then it's just top to bottom. Unless we're talking jerry or jerry or stuff and stuff. But whatever. Um, so, this page. See how these, uh, these columns are all separated? Mm -hmm. Well, watch what happens when I yeah, it's already doing it. When I minimize, it's, it's because of the width. It's noticing the resolution on the screen is silly. So here we go. Three columns. It goes to one column. And it still has nice little effects like that. And let's take a look at the uh, um, this is actually a place not too far from here. It's Miami Circle. So here we go. We have you know, three columns, all that. But hey, you want to look on your phone? Do you have to zoom in and all that? No, you don't have to. Because then it switches so that everything is one way after another. That's magic bootstrap. And it's all about the one total tangent here, uh, which is fine. As long as you guys are learning, that's what it's about, whether it's Dreamweaver or not, right? But, uh, oh, my God, forward. Um, Bootstrap uses what they say instead of tables, it's called grids. And it's a weird, first time you ever look at that code, you're going to be like, what the hell is this? Because it's using CSS codes, and when you, it'll be like span equals three. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? This doesn't make any sense. Why is Bootstrap org, isn't it? Maybe you're not connected to the internet? No, I just was. Oh. Yeah. That's 
funny. They've, uh, This is the, the magic right there. <coughs> this is the responsive, responsive grid, and this is where you would like tell. Uh, I think it's actually maybe that's the strange, but it's basically based on twelve columns. And what when you tell it, think of like a column for padding, how it goes across. You're telling it how how wide you want that to be, but also understanding that. It might flow down if it's, if it's on a smaller screen, but you know it's, it's where it's not just where things are going; it's where they really, really are. But it's modern sites, and I, I can definitely tell you, especially independents, you want more jobs. I mean, Michelle, you could, you could probably just looking finding first off finding clients that have money, and secondly, tell them, look. Um, I almost kind of specialize in converting sites to be responsive, and they're like, what's that? It's like, let me show you. And let me do it with one of your pages, and just take one of their pages and, you know, make it responsive on your, you know, do a view source, save it, and make it responsive, put something like this in, and show them the difference. And like, now look on your phone. They're, you're, you're, half, you're halfway to, to sold. Because there's a big market just making sites mobile friendly. And so uh, CS6 has like the mobile grid that you does, can use. Does it have a mobile grid? Yes. Yeah. It yeah. does already in it. But well, no, it, ha it has jQuery mobile. No, it has a mobile, mobile, mobile grid. Responsive. You can I've, make it I've tried the yeah. HTML5. Yeah. No, but it, uh, yeah, HTML5. Yeah. yeah, but the thing about the Twitter bootstrap is you can call the buttons and call like Font Awesome and things like that oh, that God, are already awesome. in there that you can't do if you're just going to do it with the HTML5. Twitter Bootstrap has all these things built into it, which is pretty cool because you can just specify colors or you know a specific button and it will it will do it all for you. And a beautiful CSS gradient button will appear. Or, I mean, it's like, oh my Let God. Let me tell you, if, you, you don't, if, if you're not familiar with Font Awesome, Mm -hmm. I I just found out about it two weeks ago. Oh yeah, I've been using it for a year. And I I like you need you, you need to write that down and and check that out. What is it? it font font it's awesome. Font awesome. Like you, yeah, you can call font awesome up, and what it'll do is like you will get instead of you having to put a graphic for Twitter, a little yeah. bird appears, or a LinkedIn will appear. So like so like this, this right here, and this. This is not a graphic. That's font awesome. That's the not font. a graphic. It's got all sorts of things. It's got oh, wow. arrows. It's got. Um, oh, yeah, I heard it, that. It, 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 it's really, it's really kind so, of. Good. So like, so like, Bootstrap gives you, mm -hmm. Bootstrap gives you very, very basic icons and, and stuff mm -hmm. with your glyph, glyphcon, glyphcons, whatever, mm -hmm. and and the buttons and such. You can make a button very quickly with the, the BTN and BTN success and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But this actually allows you really nice thing. That's all I was really looking for when I came upon Font Awesome. To like basically say, hey, I want to add a new record. So I want a nice plus sign or a check sign and then say add record and it, as a button without it being a graphic. And Font Awesome allows yeah, you to do that. Yeah, it's very easy. It's just like iPod it's dash LinkedIn or iPod yeah, yeah, dash. Literally, the, really the uh, uh, is that Chrome? Yeah. Control. So, so how do you get Bootstrap to work with uh, Dreamweaver? You just, uh, honestly, I, w I would think you just include it. You just do a. a oh, it's just a CCS. Um, it's just a so like CCS uh, library. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. CS. It should have, you should have a, let's see, there's the icons up at the top and I'll show you icons. There's an icon drop down and it maybe gives you like all icons. 
So there you go. And all you do is put in icon dash light bulb and a light bulb will appear. And you don't have to use graphics then. <laughs> which is really so cool. So it just pulls the information from... Yeah, the from them up in the cloud. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you're, you're basically referencing it. Or you can just download yeah. it to put it on your site. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be... Mm -hmm. um, so, like, see this right here? This is what I was looking for. That's, that's the CSS class. They're saying, okay, that uh, class is on the link .btn .btn .primary .btn large, and it looks like that. This one would be <laughs> icon-github, and it's placed like that. Fun, awesome. Yeah. Pretty awesome. It's just, it makes life But it's just, it's easier. not, um, it's just like either black and white. Icon. No, you cannot call it that. No, no. Oh, oh, oh. You, you know can, what? That's you can call I'm it. sorry. That's that's what it was. It wasn't. I knew there was something different. That's that's what it was. I'm sorry. So you can with Bootstrap. You can have an icon and a uh, and a word in a button. You can totally do that with Bootstrap. But what I wanted was I wanted that icon to be a different color without being a graphic. You can make those icons whatever color you want. Mm. Just whatever you want, just call it in the CSS. Move it for a rollover effect? Yes. Well, that's CSS, yeah, hover It's state. just CSS, yeah. but yeah, to it, call it, yeah. whatever you want. Be, being able to colorize the, the, the icons, that was what brought me to Fun Awesome. Mm -hmm. Could you use that in your, if you're using like WordPress? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah because I know there's a Joomla plugin, but oh, no, it's because I've got into a Joomla site but with a Joomla plugin. You have plugin to understand, awesome. plugin, it's, 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 it's kind of silly because it's just it's just a link to them. Right. Or you can just download it yourself. Yeah. Let me show you, by the way, let's, so, so I know I've gone off, mm -hmm. gone off track here, and I'm, I'm slowly running out of time, but so <coughs> this is going to be difficult because of uh, the resolution here, but um, let's go to CSS styles. And let's completely minimize it. Close that. No, of course not. Close. Just plug the half group. This was this is all their uh, their stuff. So this is actually a fairly nice page. Let's just look look at this code here. This is this is kind of a bad example. Let me see if I can open up a, um, a like the index page. Oh, and I still have to do the round trip. Okay, good. That's fine. You're gonna like the. That's what I was working on the round trip. Okay, so we're back to this page, back to the index base page. Now, what you don't see here is, and maybe you'll notice this, the, okay, these are all these classes and gray links, and, and that's not a class, even though it should be a class. That, that one fixed all that. And like here, in the referenced CSS file, are all the, the classes I can apply. Well, wait a minute, what's all this crap? This is stuff that they made 
or somebody made that didn't know what they were doing here, um, and are referenced straight in there, and are very, very similar to these guys. But, crap, how many pages are like that? Well, there were a lot. But it turns out, not that big of a problem. Should there be an automated way for it to combine everything and to name them correctly and all that? Yes, there should be, but there isn't. I'm not going to give you that magic. And I looked for magic like that. And uh, the closest thing I could find would be like Top Dollar or something like that. But I honestly, if somebody put some serious effort, there should be a program that only job is to take is to deal with older existing existing sites. Look through all of their styles for the entire entire website, and then intelligently rename them, and pull all of them, all of the styles, in the pages, and throw them to the external. That would make sense, and it could be done logically. If you had a consistent naming pattern, it could be done. Can you can you say just explain why you why you say it is messed up? And Oh, okay, sorry. What so like, like this. So this right here. See this? Uh, actually, I guess I'm right. We're not going to see it. Um, here we go. See this? So it's because it's in the in the HTML and it's in the HTML, HTML not right. externalized. Okay. So they're having to redo this, copy this to all these different pages. If they're reusing these, the whole part of the whole point of CSS is to have a consistent design. Consistent font size, consistent, you know, across all the pages. Well, the best solution that I found was like, okay, let's just go to all the pages. And I actually opened every single page, every single HTML page. Like, okay, every one, open. And I used that as my marker because I opened every single page, and then I just had it just like this. So what, what do I see here? This is kind of nice. I see the external the master CSS page, so we say, the main CSS file, and I see the internal. And it's going to vary. Every single page was different, right? Mm. Had different internal ones. Some used, some didn't. And I was like, screw this. I just want everything internal and the external. I'm dreaming about the naming, the intelligent naming. Mm. Somebody could do that. Somebody has more time than I do. But in the meantime, you know what I could do? Open each page and do this. And this is awesome. All, every one of those styles is now in that external uh, CSS page. Wow. Like that. Did it strip up on the page? Yo, yeah, yeah, no, every, all the, there's, those tags are gone. Notice those that internal. So it's gone from each page. It's gone from this this page I have open. And where do you go into the? And it's because you have to do each page that way. It's all inside the main CSS file now. And how did you do that? You you highlighted everything there, and then what command did you execute? So, um, clicking here. Um, shift. I hit shift. See here. Right. And then I drag. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. So once you put in the main CSS, every every single every single uh, page. page could access any of these styles. So did that had lots of duplicates, right? Lots of duplicate because styles. Some of those and, and pages had different styles. Right. Okay. But what was nice was at that point, um, I was very very, uh, it, was, it was comedic, but it was like, oh my god, all these styles. What did I have to do? I manually like looked at the, the CSS page and started taking notes and looking at like, okay, this was is the same as this because hardly any website is gonna have, gonna have a thousand or you know a hundred CSS uh, styles. Some like, but I knew that I could combine all these. And it ended up being, uh, I, I renamed them to much nicer. And I, I, I do uh, uh, kind of a, sim a simple naming scheme. 
I'll, I'll like to say uh, the nice thing about about uh, Dreamer, it'll, it'll try to colorize the stuff anyways mm -hmm. for you. But what I'll say, like the kind of what the some, somebody initially did this correct correctly did, but what's nice by going through and looking at what properties are set, like here it's just colors and stuff. You could rename this guy very quickly. Could okay, you, ten minutes. Was it ten minutes or five? Ten. Okay, good. Go ahead. That the style down there is duplicate. Could you just delete that at the bottom? Yeah. Well, actually, I had Control Z. I undid this. That's why. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I thought you had. Contact. Yeah. No, no. She she asked me. Okay. So, so you go in every page. You do that. And then I close. I save and I close the page. And so that's why. And I, then there are probably dupes, but it doesn't. They're totally. Out. There's, there's a ton of dupes, but they're all in one central place. Then I can go to that CSS file, and go through and like look at all the dupes. Look at all the the. Uh, but the names don't do the same name. Would it well, disregard it if it was already there? Yeah. Let's yeah. Totally. And, and just totally disregard it. Yeah. I mean, if, if I have a duplicate for it, then it's fine. And, and honestly, Git was a bit of a lifesaver in this too, because, you know, I, I made a bunch of changes. I could always go back. I could always go backwards. Um, let me. Uh, I should like. I promised you I'd I'd do this, and then I really want to show you the round trip editing, unless you guys all already know about round trip editing. No. no. Oh my God, that's yeah. so awesome. Um, I mean, I, I can't, you guys wouldn't believe how many times I've shown people, I'm like, let me show you this. This round trip editing thing is just wonderful. Uh, let's working with Git is very good. Because when I used to work for a previous company, we were all working remotely, and we'd all be working on the same site. And I didn't know what you know the others were doing, and maybe they would go in and see something that one of us had missed and change it, and then I would go to do something. And the great thing was when we were on Git, if there was a mistake, you could see it, like you said, with the, you know, you could see the difference. So that was absolutely fantastic. Or, it, you know, you just, yeah, well, it was an update, or you knew that if there was a, a, a problem, you could see side by side what was changed and what was before. So you knew, oh, I just did something. Because when we did one project before we got it on to Git, I did something, my boss did something, then I did something else and overwrote what he did because I didn't know he had done something. <laughs> and was like, oh my God, I just <laughs> lost everything that he did. Oh. So that's where Git is, is really good. Especially as I say, if you're working remotely with other people, it's like a you it really need it. was designed it. for uh, the guy that was responsible for the Linux operating system. Mm -hmm. He, he basically designed it so that you know there's thousands of people all over the world working on on Linux, yeah. committing changes and all this. At the same time. At the yeah. same time. So this was a way of managing that. And so it handled web design. Linus. Linus Torvalds. Yeah. Smart guy. Hmm. If only our software was that smart. Yeah. Yeah. You are. You're just not recognized. Is that what I said? Thank you, Kevin. That's the only difference. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> I was asking which which do you prefer um, for responsive the bootstrap or CSS? Well, both are different, but I, I, I did do a tutorial on Bootstrap and had a lot of fun playing with it. I did one on Linda.com mm -hmm. and worked my way through it, and I was like, oh, it just made my life so much easier. It's a CSS framework, right? Yes, it is. And as I say, when you call buttons, and it makes the buttons with gradients for you, and you can change the colors, and, and there they are already for you. You don't have to have graphics, you don't have to sort of work graphics. it out, yeah. It was just like, wow. It was just so powerful, the fact that you could do that. 
No, it doesn't. It doesn't take up then because you could no, you know, it's, it's the speed of your site then right. faster because you've got you're not uploading graphics or right. anything like that. So it was. I must admit, I did had really really enjoyed Twitter, Bootstrap. But I mean, I, I, there's there's a whole load of new Adobe software coming out soon that they were talking about today at Max, the Adobe Max conference. Um, that will come to you if you have the cloud because there are a ton of innovations at the moment that are on the cutting edge of so many things and involved with WCC and everything trying to keep standards up and they're just doing so much. The, the thing is this though, if you, you really kind of have to think. Um, not everybody is going to use CS6. <laughs> they're not going to use it. I mean, most places, if you want to be more open, you're going to be using Bootstrap or, or something that's non, as they view it, proprietary, even if it's not. So, because, you know, whether it's devs that started a company or whatever, they're not going to care. They're going to like, look, this works. We don't care. It's easier for you. Our system already works. Bootstrap is, is practically industry standard. <coughs> So, uh, what's, what's the story with the Flash? What, what, what's the problem with it? What, what's, how is it going to work from now on? Well, they're going to use it in games. They're using it in games. Flash has been used for game development because it was all to do with Apple that made, they made the announcement of Flash is dead. Basically, they killed it. Well, primarily Flash, uh, it, it was not as secure. <laughs> you know, if you had Flash running on your site, you didn't know if somebody using Flash could hack your site and gain control of your computer, and they had continuous, I think they had a lot of problems with that. That's the main reason why Apple said no Flash on a, on a Mac, and of course, you're cutting out all of, the, all of those Mac users, and iPads, mm -hmm. and iPhones, and everything like that, and you know, what are you going to do? And so, yeah. and uh, supposedly HTML5 will do the stuff that Flash did, but in a more secure way, than but it's not there yet. Yeah. So when when was it they decided that they don't want to have Flash on Apple? Uh -huh. Oh, long well, time ago. Yeah, it was a few couple of years ago, and it, then they just phased it out. But they're using it to say Flash, basically for gaming. That's about it. So you know, on our website, yeah. uh, the Atlanta PHP website, we have a Flash slider, Flash slider, uh, that you know has like a rotates images at the top, mm -hmm. but um, it, it's a, viewed at a site on that, uh, that is like an Apple site or something that doesn't allow flash, then we have a, an image that just displays a non, you know, just a non -moving. image. So you always have something, that, but that was built into the theme design because we don't know what it's going to be looking on. It looks great on Windows, but on an iPad you won't see it. Yeah, flash is available on Um, yes. Okay, so I, I want to show you, and we're, we're here. Okay, I want to show you um, uh, <coughs> the jump over this. Well, can you describe what round trip programming is before you start trying to? Okay. Code? Sure. Um, by the way, this is I. I I would just get doing it and get fast forward to like 70, 88 commits. Uh, but this is the CSS, the end CSS, what it looks like now, by the way. But I'm gonna I'm gonna show you round trip editing, uh, and it's it's ba mainly to do with graphics. And I, I did a very very simple. Uh, let's see that eight. A very simple. So, I just grabbed this from the website.
So, this is the <laughs> So here's our the little logo, the Atlanta user group logo, right? Um, well, I don't like the fact that that's right there. Or maybe your client doesn't like that. But it's a graphic. It's all graphic. Um, what can I do about that? Well, in the meantime, I kind of created a PNG with layers to, I kind of did this in advance. Uh, you can do much, much more complicated things because you can do stuff like this. This is where, uh, I'll explain in more detail, but you kind of have to see it. So here has the main title, bk.png. This is a JPEG. It's, point, it's saying here that the PNG is the source of it. See, it, notice how it says fireworks right here? Mm -hmm. I love fireworks. I use it more than Photoshop or anything else because it does vector and bitmap, which means I can do Illustrator or Photoshop in fire, in, with fireworks. Fireworks is actually uh, from Macromedia, not Adobe, much like Dreamweaver is from Macromedia, not Adobe. Not for much longer. Right, well, well, well no, no, but it's like they came. Yeah. I, I like the idea of one product to handle a little bit Still everything. Going. So, yeah. so is the... But, uh, but, I use, I use but Photoshop also, also does, can also do this, by the way. That's, that's important. <laughs> Photoshop can also do what I'm about to do. So remember, this is just a graphic to can prove it. Can I ask a question real quick? Um, well, Fireworks, does it, does it do vector? Um, just you as good? Yes. Just forget Fireworks is getting done already. Just it, keep it does it vector and vector. Just as good as Illustrator? Yeah, but they're, just, they're doing away with Fireworks. So. They're yeah. doing away with if you have an older copy of Fireworks, yeah, you but it. otherwise, I mean, if it, there's right. no point in layering it all, and if you've got many the end, you're not going to do it. It was basically um, Fireworks uh, was a company, Macromedia, which is where, where actually Dreamweaver came from as well. They were in competition with Adobe. So Fireworks was their answer to Photoshop. So, but, but in my opinion, it was always better. Yeah, I, I use it more than four. Because it, yeah. <laughs> but, anyway, but anyway, so again, this is just to kind of show you here, this is very simple. It's just a graphic. See? Just just that graphic right there. No, nothing up my sleeve. And I'm going to edit it here. Uh, it pops up and says, Do you want to use this source PNG? Like, yes. Use that. I'm pointing it to the PNG that's right there. I don't know. Usually it already knows that, but. And fireworks is going to go on the side. Now. Okay, well, um, there's some things here. This is resolution. You've got to get a better resolution. Same here. Um, no, not yet. Two okay. minutes. Two minutes. Okay. All right, yeah. Um, so I'm going to change the resolution here to, so you can we can actually see the entire graphic here. I'm going to like uh, move that to be in the center, right? Because of this setting right here, this optimized setting, it knows what to put it as. Remember, this is a PNG. Um, one right there. And hit done. And. I don't know why is it giving me this. Okay, whatever. There you go. Yeah. Done. Did you have to refresh it or anything like that, or just did it automatically take? No. no what did it, you do again? It, Sorry. It, it, no, that's fine because I there's yeah, it, 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 because it's, it's weight. There's more. It, 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 so, but wait, okay. there's more. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna edit I'm gonna edit it again. I'm gonna edit it again. Yes, use the PNG. What did you so hit edit? You went into edit. edit. Um, and there's some uh, other things here I want to show. Like, um, hey, how about let's say we're meeting at Disco Finders. <laughs> and that's text I can edit. Mm -hmm. That's just straight text. That's, you know, that should probably move up a little bit. We'll put that right there. Um, hey, how about an icon of our fearless leader? 
Oh my god. There you go. <laughs> Thanks. And, um, but that's actually edits your PNG file, right? Right, well, I'm going to need that, but all I have to do here is hit done. And, oh, wow. and that's one of why this keeps popping up. Six and there we go. Wow. And there's one other thing huh. that, that I, well, there's, so this is a, a JPEG, right? So JPEG is, uh, it has loss in it. You can actually go in in the fireworks and say, I don't know, go through this whole thing. I don't know why it does this. Um, it's usually, you don't have to do that more than once. I can actually say, hey, um, I want, if I can remember exactly where it is, um, is it here? I can say, I want this area to be a JPEG. I want this area, because it's text, to be what? Okay. GIF. GIF. Okay. Because GIF will not, GIF oh. is not lossless. It, it won't get jagged if you zoom it up. Well, maybe actually it will, but, but it's, it's better for displaying text versus JPEG. Um, and notice how what it's done doing here? See how, see how it marked all this stuff up? It'll actually cut it up for you. It'll actually cut it up, create the table, the, the borders, all that, all that stuff. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Dessert topping. Yeah. 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 Well, basically, it's it, it, right, right. Well, exactly, exactly. Actually, Dreamweaver, and that's okay. you know what I won't go back to here, but that's one other cool thing with Dreamweaver. So I'm, I'm not gonna. That, I, I did want to show about graphics. Any graphic, you give, give somebody a graphic and it's like, yeah, but you know what, I want, uh, when they click on Disco Binders, for it to take them to Disco Binders. Well, wait a minute, that's part of the graphic. Mm -hmm. How about if they just click the whole graphic and it takes them to Disco Binders? No. I only want it, <laughs> so if they click on dis Disco Binders. Well, show me another IDE tool that can do this, and I'd like to know. This is cool. Yeah. So, this graphic. Oh, you know why? It's because of I haven't let go of it. So it'll do that in Photoshop too. Yes. Um, let me go back here. It um, makes it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we go. Um, notice, see, notice this. It's all cut up. Put all the HTML in there. From our cut up, it's actually a bunch of tables and stuff. But something else. Let, let's just. And I know it's the last thing, and I'm way over here. <laughs> but but this this right here, this mapping tool. On any graphic, I can select this, and I can say, hey, you know what? That right there. Hot spot. That's a hot spot. This has been, been around forever, but it's difficult to do unless you have a nice editor like this. So that on this graphic, not anywhere else on the graphic, but on this graphic, you can go to, say, that page or something. So you can, you can take a picture of, uh, of a plant. Yeah, we have yeah. more of that. I learned a lot of stuff from you. Yeah. Oh, no, I understand. I understand. Thank you for presenting. But, but hey, um, a Dreamweaver visit? All right. The Koozie, that's all I needed. Oh, I thought you had a Dreamweaver one. Do you know what I'm talking about? The thrust, that thrust plate? Yeah. They would like lettuce in there. They've got a great space.